Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 sim tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can pre-populate the FMC so you can select VNAV for departure, and that will then increase your capacity and decrease your workload. Now of course, to make this as realistic as possible, we'll simulate a real-world operational flight from London Gatwick to Athens in Greece. We're on stand 16 in Gatwick and we're pretty much ready to go. We'll just brief the SID and show you the information I put in the FMC. Now the departure we're going to fly today is the Wizard 4 Mike, so if I bring up the ND and the FMC here, you can see here on the route page 2, I've already selected the Wizard 4 Mike. Now the initial climb says climb straight ahead to 2.3 miles off the ILS onto a track of 258, and then if we go to plan, sorry, and step through it, you can see here we're then going to make a left turn, intercept the 284 radial inbound to Mayfield, I've manually placed 220 knots or below here just to ensure the aircraft can track this first turn accurately in VNAV. And then we have some at or above altitudes to comply with. After the Mayfield VOR, we intercept the 259 radial inbound to Dover, climbing to 6,000 feet. And the uh, SID terminates just before Dover here at Wizard. So prior to takeoff, the pilot flying always briefs the chart, comparing it to the FMC to ensure that it matches identically to ensure that we're flying it as accurately as possible. Now performance wise, you can see here our takeoff weight is 74.3 tons, it's very heavy. And because we're fully loaded, uh, our takeoff thrust setting is going to be full 26k with a shoon temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. It's going to give us a takeoff on N1 setting of 92.5%. Uh, I'd base that all on the Boeing OPT performance app. And then here we've got all our speeds. We've got the V1, VR, and V2, 147, 148, and 154. And you can see the trim setting I've set as well based on the mean aerodynamic uh, Mach cord, I should say. And that's 23.3%. Now, just prior to takeoff, uh, to make sure that VNAV accelerates accurately, we need to pre-populate takeoff page two. Now, this page I'm not too familiar with. We don't use it in my company personally. You can put the runway wind, the runway slope, the runway condition. We, we typically use dry and wet. You have a skid and slippery runway you could select here too. And you can see the performance with the assumed temperature. But this is the bit we're interested in here, these three heights here, which we want to pre-populate so that VNAV accelerates accurately. Now the first one here we have is the acceleration height. Now this is the height above the ground at which we want the aircraft to accelerate and it's based on the noise abatement departure procedure which you might have already seen, I've done a tutorial on before. Now today in Gatwick we're flying an NADP2 departure. Now you can get this information from the aerodrome uh, information bulletin on the chart but thankfully in my company they pr produce something called a briefing pack which tells us that it's an NADP2 and NADP2 the acceleration height is 1000 feet so that means the aircraft will initially climb at V2 plus 20 when it gets to a thousand feet it'll bug the uh, initially the I think it's 230 knots off the top of my head or any restriction that you've put in the FMC so if you remember we put 220 knots or below the aircraft should maintain that speed as soon as we get to this height uh, next, let's have a look at this, which is EOXLHT. Well, that stands for Engine Out Acceleration Height. Now, this is the height in which, in the event of an engine failure, we want the aircraft to accelerate for the third segment climb, which is pretty much done at level flight from V2 to, to the best climb speed uh, with the flaps up, which is which is the up speed. Okay. Now, we typically would set something called the minimum flap retraction altitude. Now, in Gatwick, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but just to keep it nice and simple, we'll stick it to the default engine out acceleration height, which is also a 1,000 feet. Now, lastly, we have the reduction uh, thrust altitude. Now, this is the height at which the N1 limit changes from takeoff to climb. Now, if you remember, our takeoff climb thrust setting is going to be 909 and then the default value which we use in my company is, is 1500 feet and you'll notice that the FMA doesn't change but the thrust will reduce and you'll see the M1 limit change from thrust to climb and I think uh, looking at it earlier we will go from 92.9% to 90.2% and what what this is for is just to ensure that the you know it's less wear and tear on the engines less maintenance work it also reduces uh, the noise slightly as well so that's it. That's what you have to put in the FMC. So we'll close that now. And so long as you put all the information accurately, you should be able to engage LNAV, VNAV, and the auto throttle, even with the engine shut down on stand. That means when we push Toga and take off, all we need to do is engage the autopilot in a thousand feet and let the FMC and VNAV and the automation do all the hard work for us. 
Now I'll get the APU started, I'll place it on the bus, I'll get the pushback sorted and you can meet me uh, just on the taxi out as we go for the takeoff briefing and then we'll look at the takeoff with VNAV. Okay, so now the pushback is complete, the aircraft is configured for takeoff. I've just completed the before taxi checklist. We're going to do a very short taxi here from Juliet to Mike 1 for runway 26 left. So, we can release the parking brake, we'll do a config check. Uh, there's no takeoff configuration warning horn. Pop, pop, uh, pop on the turn off and taxi lights. And we'll make this uh, initial left turn to establish ourselves onto Mike. And uh, guys, I bought myself some rudder pedals, so hopefully we'll see some single engine work soon. But I am trying to taxi with the rudder, rudders here, which is obviously what we don't use in real life. In real life we use this, this tiller, uh, and we don't use the rudders when we're taxiing around. But it's working reasonably well. Right, we'll get ourselves onto Mike, taxiing towards Mike 1, and we'll do the before takeoff checklist. So, here we go. Right, let's have a look at the before takeoff checklist. So config was checked, flaps we have five green light, stab trim is set for takeoff, and then we'll just do a quick takeoff review and briefing. So we have the packs in auto, the bleeds are on, the V speeds are set for takeoff. We've got 147, 148, and 154 set on the MCP for V2 as well. And the departure was the Wizard 4 mic climbing straight ahead to 2.3 miles off the DME for the ILS and then a left turn inbound to Mayfield for the initial turn and stopping the climb at altitude 6,000 feet which is set once on the MCP and it's also set twice you can just about see it here on the FO's FMC on page 2 there so 6,000 feet set right well imagine we've contacted Gatwick Tower and we have been cleared for takeoff there's a, a very light southerly wind so we just need to do the before takeoff checklist below the line so pop all these lights on the weather radar would come on to pop the strobes on and then the transponder would do uh, we go to TARA so we can now go MCP is set the transponders TARA strobe lights are on the landing lights are all on we have been cleared for takeoff for runway 26 left as obviously as I mentioned earlier and when I was briefing this to you all we need to do is engage the autopilot at a thousand feet which is the height at which we typically engage it and then LNAV and VNAV should do all the work for us, of course, if it doesn't, we can take over, use other modes in the automation, but it shouldn't do, it should do as it's told. So I'll do a bit of a rolling takeoff today, uh, obviously check if we're clear left, clear right, but there's no AI traffic, so I should be on my own. It'll be a bit of a surprise if someone now flies over my head. Lining up slightly, overshot again, I think, just getting used to these rudder pedals again. Good, so... Runway heading, we have 258, tracks coming up nicely, so we can set the timing here. Oh, there we go. Standard thrust lever is up to 40%. Uh, here's stabilised, there's toga, set takeoff thrust. And you can see N1 toga's engaged as usual, and LNAV and VNAV are armed on the FMA. So, takeoff thrust set indications normal. Just light forward pressure as I always mention, using the rudders to maintain centre line. 80 knots is checked, don't know where my co-pilot is today, he's asleep. Just maintaining centre line, using aerons to keep the wings level during the takeoff roll. Coming up to V1. V1. Rotate. And rotate, so here we go. Two to two and a half degrees per second through the dead band up to initially 15 degrees. A little bit of trim required here. L nav's already engaged, so positive rate gear up. Just trimming onto the flight directors. And VNAV speed's now engaged. So it's now managing speed. We have N1 as well. Just following the flight director, it's getting ready to engage the autopilot at a thousand feet, so here it comes. There we go, command A, and you can see here the aircraft has already bugged the up speed. So all I need to now do is retract the flaps as uh, per the flap retraction schedule. So we're above V2 plus 15, so we can now select flap 1. It's still commanding the up speed. This is all new to me guys, I mean we don't use VNAV, so it's a bit of an experiment. Uh, 14 degrees, so we don't need engine anti-ice. Here's the left turn coming in to go inbound to Mayfield. 
We're above the flap 1 speed, so we can now select flaps 1, and it should then bug 220 knots because of the initial turn and the departure. Watch the heading. I think as soon as the leading edge flap transit light extinguishes, we'll get 220 knots. Oh, we are doing 220 knots. Oh, I'm being a bit of a dork today. Yeah, it's because we're so heavy, the upspeed is 220, which happens to also be the upspeed, which is very coincidental. Anyway, flaps up, no lights. We've already got VNAV engaged. We could do the after takeoff checklist. So, gear up and off, order brakes off, uh, start switches to off, got three tracks, and taxi light off. Altimeters, we've got, uh, oh, sorry, just check the air conditioning and pressurization 1.5 psi. All the switches looking good. That's set. And an altitude altimeter cross check. Uh, we've got the QNH 995 set 4,500 for 6,000 feet. And now we actually want to get rid of VNAV because we want to reduce our rate of climb to 1,000 feet per minute. Uh, so VNAV won't comply with that restriction. That just prevents any nuisance uh, TCAS warnings, TAs, and potentially RAs. And now we're no longer using the ILS. We can actually select the VOR and uh, both sides to Mayfield and Dover. And you can see here. We now have raw data backup, uh, the VOR Mayfield tuned, and then Dover as well, just in case we lose the FMC. And that's it, that's the after takeoff checklist complete. Okay, so now we've leveled off at 6,000 feet and we no longer want to fly 220 knots. All we have to simply do is select VNAV. That will allow the aircraft to now accelerate to its best climb speed whilst maintaining 6,000 feet because we haven't received our further uh, climb clearance yet. And the reason it's now gone to 250 instead of 220 is because we passed the waypoint at which the 220 knot restriction was placed at. Anyway, that was quite a brief tutorial. Sorry for the mix up there because I was so heavy today. Our up speed, which is VRF 40 plus 70, happened to be the same as the speed restriction I put in the FMC, which was 220. Obviously, the FMC would bug. I think initially 2.30 with the with the flaps extended, but again, we don't use this feature in the company I work for, so I'm not too sure about it. I have to do some more testing and experimenting, but if you happen to be a real-line pilot that uses this, obviously I appreciate the feedback myself. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. I'll hopefully do a tutorial using the excellent Zebo mod soon, uh, because it really is a, a really good fun aircraft to use, and I like the way it handles. Anyway, take care, fly safe, and I'll see you again very soon.